Okay, hello, I'm Jason Dragon, Emerald Computers, and we're going to do a really quick on-the-fly video about how to install the new Ubuntu 19.10 in a virtual VMware box. Um, so first off, we're going to just do a couple little tricks. I have some of this already done on my computer, but I'm going to show you exactly how to do it from scratch. So first, we want to go to VirtualBox, V-A-R box.org. Oops. All right. So you're going to go to virtualbox.org and you're going to download the newest version of virtual VirtualBox. Easy enough. So you're going to download that. I've already downloaded it right here. And then you're going to run the installation process. And that's a normal default installation process. Just click, 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 click. Now, if you have an SSD drive, I recommend installing VirtualBox on your SSD drive. It takes up a very small amount of space. But I remember I recommend going in after you're done and making the default data storage location on your spinning hard drive. So now that we've done, we've gone through the process and we've installed VirtualBox. So when you get it, you don't normally have all these. It'll just be tools. Um, these are other virtual boxes I have installed on the machine. You can, of course, download and install virtual boxes that are already created for you, or you can do what I'm doing today and create a brand new virtual box from scratch. So now you want to go and download Ubuntu. Just go search Ubuntu in Google. So we're here on the Conical website. We're going to go to, let's see, I think we went to the wrong page. We'll hit download Ubuntu desktop right there. And then we're going to hit, by default, it gives you the um, LTS, the long-term one. We want the newest one, Ubuntu 19.10. Uh, so we're going to hit download right here. Um, and then when you're, when you're on this page, it will ask you to do all this stuff right there. Now, mine has already downloaded. I've already downloaded it. It's right here. So we don't need to download it. It takes about five to seven minutes to download. Now it's as simple as creating a new virtual box. So we're going to hit new. We're going to call it Ubuntu 10 or 19-10. Um, if you notice here, it's saving in the D drive slash VM. Well, VMS for VMs. <laughs> um, it's running Linux. I'm going to give this one, you can give it as much RAM or as little RAM as you want. Let's give it four gigs of RAM right here. We're going to say create a virtual hard drive. I'm just going to give it 10 gigs virtual hard drive. We're going to do dynamically allocated. I'm just going to pick all the defaults right here. It's a lot quicker. So now one thing that I like to do right here, we're going to go click on settings. Um, by default, it only lets it use one of my processors. But as you can tell over here, I have an eight core system. So I'm going to give it four processors. I'm also, I don't want it to lock any processor in, in, in full. So I'm going to give it 98%. So there's always, it can only use 98% of any process, processor. So there's always two processor, I mean, 2% available. Um, that should help my computer out a little bit. So now we're going to hit OK. Now we're going to boot up the system. It's going to say Ubuntu 19.2. Now it's going to say, hey, wait, this is a blank one. We need to give it a startup disk. So, of course, we're going to find a startup disk. And, you know, we can have a, a couple different copies of Windows. Um, you could download Windows. If you want to do this with Windows, um, you can download um, anytime you want straight from um, Microsoft's website and um, download all the ISO files that you want. Um, the Windows 10 version is updated to Microsoft's website all the time. It's called Media Creation Tool. So if you want to download Windows, you can do that too. Um, now we're going to hit Start. It's going to, as you can tell right there, it's booting up the system. It's like, wow, we're already in Ubuntu. In an itty bitty little window. So while we're doing this right here, I'm going to scale this up. Um, Oops, cancel. We're already viewing. It's already going pretty good. Let's give it a few minutes. Now, of course, you know, this is a decently fast machine. Not the, not the world's best. Why is scaled mode not working like it used to? Anyway. 
All right, so here's when it has network action, sound action, um, where it's attaching to the hard drives. Wow, that was pretty quick. So let's see, let's go, um, we're running this in a virtual machine. Let's go install Ubuntu. English is my preferred language. <coughs> Installing right now. So I have never installed Ubuntu 19.10. Um, I have installed other versions, much older versions of Ubuntu. As you saw in my thing, there was an older version. So let's say continue. You know, of course, if you want to donate some money right here, you can go through and uh, contribute. I, you know, if, if you enjoy Ubuntu and you use it, please donate some money. It's, it's kind of nice. Um, you know, they also got a lot of good books out there. You can um, buy a book on Amazon. I'll put a couple, uh, Matthew Helmkey writes a lot of books, and they're really good. Um, he hasn't written one about Ubuntu lately, but he was wrote, he's pretty much the main guy writing books about those for a long time. Um, he's an old friend of mine. Anyway, uh, let's see, normal install, minimum install, download updates while using, while installing Ubuntu. Well, hmm, okay. So maybe we'll not, well, I guess we'll download the updates, sure. It might take it a little longer to install on this video. Ah, here we go. So let's see how long Ubuntu takes to install on a 4 gig system, 4 gig system with a quad core processor. And it's hitting that network pretty hard. In the past, I've been able to, in the Windows one, you're able to uh, scale it relatively quickly. Virtual machine. Okay. Switch. Whoosh. It made it okay now. Okay. I've never actually used this before. So in Windows, it knows how to tell it. Let's try to get something in a, in a appropriate aspect ratio. Let's see. Erase the disk. Okay, great. Um, well, I guess we'll just do that. So let's just do install now. Encrypt new Ubuntu. No, we don't want to encrypt it. Install now. If you continue, blah, 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 blah. Now, I feel a lot safer running this in a virtual box, even though I could be running um, it on Ubuntu. The Ubuntu install actually lets you run on Windows 10. Um, let's continue right here. It's it's created its own little 10 gig uh, virtual box. Let's just let it go. Okay. Well, it's doing something. So we can go over here and we can see how much it, so it's really not hitting any of my drives. So this is the drive it's actually gonna be working on. Oh, my background changes automatically, by the way. Okay, cool, so now we're gonna go back over here. Now we are not in Denver. Well, why does it have Denver time? So here, Arizona has this weird thing um, because we don't change our time zone like everybody else does. And then we'll just say continue. Continue with the Arizona time zone. We don't change our back and forth. So my name is, I'll just call my name Emerald. And we're going to just call it, not virtual box, who wants that? Um, the name of this server is a EP Epsilon U Ubuntu. Ubuntu. Epsilon Ubuntu. Pick a username. Okay, cool. Um, this is where I ran into problems before. Yeah, we know. Uh, very weak password. Log in automatically. Let's do that. I don't want to have to actually log in when I um, use Ubuntu. Of course, you know, if you're doing this for security or you're actually doing this on a machine you care about, um, don't pick those settings. Welcome to Ubuntu copying files. It's pretty cool. Let's give it a little bit more um, space so you guys can see it a lot better. I don't want it to run up into the webcam. 
I definitely don't want to have the aspect ratio be way out of whack. I've never run um, a virtual box in the scaled mode. I mean, we're running all this together. We've always been able to do that. Um, if you're wondering what software I'm using to record this, I'm using the um, OBS Studio, which is pretty much the standard software that most screen recording YouTubers use. Okay, copying files. Okay, come on. So I have a couple laptops I'm going to be installing Ubuntu 19.10 on just to see how they work. We have a huge percentage of our laptops. Um, you know, we probably have about 40 laptops right now that are running uh, the Mint operating system from Linux. Or So, you know, that's kind of cool too. All right, we're copying files. It should be pretty fast. It is copying and writing uh, both to the same hard drive. I probably could have done this faster if I would have moved the ISO to one of the other hard drives, but then it could be reading from one and writing to another, but um, this is what we got. So, Dare to Dream, Eurovision Song Contest, okay. So, that's pretty cool. I have not used Ubuntu extensively for at least five years. Um, I have installed it on at least a dozen machines in the last year. Um, the LTS version, that's the one we've been installing, the 18.4, uh, and um, it's pretty good. I don't have Ubuntu currently running on any of my systems except for one laptop. I had a laptop that this it was a nice i5 but the screen was shattered so i said heck let's put ubuntu on it and let's hook it up to a tv and let it play youtube basically all day and that's exactly what it does but i haven't really used it much in a while okay so now it looks like it's done with the um, copying stuff from the files now it's actually going through and uh, retrieving data Ah, I hate it. We gotta wait three minutes. So while we're waiting here, you know, we can still see how it's running in there. We can also open up the VirtualBox software. Ah, it moved on me. I just installed the newest version, so it moved. All right, 26 seconds remaining is going pretty quick. So we do also have the Nord VPN software. I, um, so I could go a little bit faster on the internet and because we're doing pretty safe stuff, I um, do have it disabled right now. I notice that when I am running through the VPN, my speed is about one-fourth of what it is when I'm not running through the VPN. So I try and, you know, if I'm doing just plain Jane, downloading massive amounts of data, which is what I'm doing right now, then that's exactly what I do. I just don't bother with the, um, with the VPN. Now, we'll get back to that later. Retrieving file 147. I have no idea what file 147 is. Okay, local repositories. So, if you're new in the world of Ubuntu, a repository is basically like um, a server that has a whole bunch of software on it. And these are all software programs that have been pre-checked to be compatible with your um, version of the operating system that you're running. And what's nice about the repository is it knows what prerequisites any particular pieces of software need. So, if you want to install this, but this program needs this, this, and this to function, then when you try to install this, it'll just automatically install this, this, and this. Um, quite nice. And it'll actually give you a nice little list and it knows which order to install things. It's, you know, it's actually pretty elegant. I kind of like it. So here we are, we're still retrieving file 49 of 49. 
So how much internet are we using? We're really, well, we're using almost no internet. Um, to put this in perspective, this is not even half of 1% of my internet ability. So I just wish it would use more and be faster. There doesn't seem to be any real bottleneck anywhere except for the CPU. I've given it the ability to use four processors, so... I wonder... yeah, there we are. Virtual... VM Virtual Box. Ah! So let's unpin the taskbar. Pin the taskbar. Alright, so that's the Virtual Box right there. And we have version 18.4 running. Um, unfortunately, I haven't run 18.4 on this virtual box in about a year, and the last couple times I ran it, I, for the life of me, couldn't remember the password. So I'm probably just going to wipe that off and reload it from scratch. But, you know, heck, if 19.10 is good, 19-10 is good. Configuring hardware, we should be really close to being done here. So, now, when you run virtual software like this, it really, really works better and uh, with obviously a more a processor with more cores, but it also works a lot better with particular Intel or AMD processors that are specifically designed to be running um, VM. And the i7-4770, which is what I'm running, a fairly old chip, but still good, uh, that particular chip does have the appropriate um, information to run virtual box machines, and therefore it is a lot more efficient on here. If you have an old, it's not necessarily how old your chip is, it's what features your chip um, does or does not have. And let's go back here. So while we're waiting for this to install, we can always look up, you know, Intel 4770. Now, they have this thing called the ARC, which is really good on Intel's part. It pretty much tells you all the information about um, your various processors. So cores, threads, BIOS, TDP. We're just doing this while we're waiting, really. <coughs> So the onboard graphics has the ability to do 4K, um, which is kind of interesting. Um, I do have a better, so Max Vid, so I do have a much much better processor on one of my other computers, and it has the onboard graphics, and I've never been able to get it to successfully do 4K. So it's kind of interesting that it actually specific that this older one specifically says it can do 4K. So, scalability. VPro, so it does not have VPro eligibility. We don't really care about that. So, virtually, Intel virtualization technology. That's where you basically... So, virtual platforms. So, that's the one you want to do. So, whatever processor you're thinking of buying, um, or whatever processor you have, you want to basically look on the ARC and make sure that this has a yes next to it. If this does not have a yes next to it, so if you were getting like say an older i3 or an i5 or you know some chip, not 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 all the chips they put that fu functionality into. And if you don't have that functionality, um, your thing will be a lot less. Now let's see directed input output so this will allow more native input output to your peripherals with um you know with that my chip does not have that feature so that means if i'm trying to use the usb ports or something on on this it will have issues uh, right now i don't think i have given it access to my usb ports uh, partially because i don't want it to wreck my webcam or my microphone while I'm doing this. Um, and it doesn't really need it for my keyboard and mouse that's already running. So let's see, we should have, we should be almost done right here. So 
So, a lot of nice little things right there. This chip is a fairly old chip. It's been, gosh, I think I've been running this computer now. Other than a few upgrades, I've been running this computer 24 seven for, you know, upwards of five years. So 24 seven for five plus years, pretty good little machine. Okay, so we should be done here. Now, remember I told it to download packages because I do know it later on it's going to want to do updates and all that stuff and we don't want to have to do updates later on. So if we take Intel, I, let's see, i5, 25, no, 9400F. Let's look at that one. So that's a little bit newer chip, much newer chip. So let's see what it says. So virtualization technology, and it has the I.O. ports. So that's a pretty nice little chip. Um, that chip is actually quite a bit cheap, less expensive than the chip I'm running right now. It's a $150 chip is the consumer recommended price. Of course, it's not even that going to be that expensive. 144 right now is what the price is. So let's see what an i3, let's just pick an i3-8100 because that's what Google automatically suggested. Here's a $117 chip. It is a brand new chip. Virtualization technology, wow, they're putting it in all their chips. That's pretty nice. Okay. So it looks like the newer generation chips seem to have it. Older generation i3s definitely did not have that. i3-4130. Let's see if that one has it. Wow, it did. Okay. I do really like Intel processors, and I like how they work. Um, I do. I, for a long time, we were an AMD-based company, but... For the last six years or so, we've pretty much been Ubuntu, I mean, uh, Intel focused on all, most all of our products. Um, we like it. It works pretty good. Intel does have some really, really nice uh, stuff. Okay, so this installation does take quite a while, it looks like. You know, but we're installing a full operating system. So, you know, what should, what, what should you expect? Running post-installation. So, it's, we're pretty much done here. Now, when you run the virtual box, it usually doesn't really pro pass on a lot of the video card items. So, you don't really get to run your video card very well on it. Maybe if we had that I.O. thing. So now we're going to restart the virtual box. Bye bye. It's kind of cool minimalist logo they have there. Like a little animal looking at you. There it goes. Failed to send host log message. Okay, so I don't know if it's locked or not. It says it's still running. See, nope. I don't want to mess it up, so let's just let it keep running. Okay, cool. Please remove the installation medium and press enter. Okay, whatever. <laughs> it is so cool. Clean. Hmm. It's giving a good chunk of error messages. We might have to close this and remove the installation media. So we're all just learning this together, step by step by step.
Nice giant black window. I'm just clicking around seeing what the various options are. Okay. Well, let's see. Connect your accounts easily. We're not going to do that right now. So we have our wireless co wired connection and our username is Emerald. Okay. Well, there we go. So I don't I'm not really probably the best person to give you a tour of Ubuntu. I just wanted to show you how Ubuntu um can get installed relatively quickly. Let's watch this. No, we don't want to do that. Let's hit skip. Um, next. Probably should have picked no. But now it's thinking. Uh, no, we don't need location services. We're ready to go. Visual Studio Code. Okay, cool. Sublime text, get Kraken, GNU, VLC. Mm, remind me later. Well, there we go. So now, what are what do we have access to? So we have our desktop, obviously. Videos, everything's pretty much a blank. Blank install. Eh, this operating system looks kind of nice. So, right now we need to figure out what resolution we're in. So we can see our um, disk usage. So how much disk usage do we get after a full install? So we don't have little, unfortunately there's no little task bars. And we're getting some, I know it's at a really low resolution, I can tell by how it's um, kind of not looking that crisp. So... Hot. So we do have the terminal window. Yay. Everybody loves the terminal. Wow. So for a fresh install. Okay. No. Go away. So you can see all the data. We're using about 6 gigs of data. Um, it's giving it a permission denied. So user folder made 6.60 gigs. Ah, so basically we're already almost running out of space. I probably should have given it a little bit more space to begin with. Now I'm definitely not the um, expert at Ubuntu by far. So I'm not even sure where you go to change your resolution on this. So I don't know if I want to end the video here or um, you know, I'm going to play around with it a little bit. So we probably don't need that. And the software catalog is being loaded, so that's fun. Um, there's like a def like built into the operating system, there's an Amazon app. That's really interesting. It doesn't seem to load anything, though. So, looks like the lesson learned here is you want to give this thing more than, um, definitely more than four, 10 gigs of space. So I don't think you can actually edit the space while you're in the actual operating system, but I'm 90% sure you can exit, you know, you can close your operating system and you can edit how much space it gives it. Of course, you know, I have all these other drives there and I could always mount another drive and give it more space. Okay, so let's see. I wish it would, kind of don't like how small everything is, but I think it's because I'm in such a low resolution. See, if I know if I was in Windows, I would just be, okay, let's get rid of this. Hmm. 
Okay, so the, the software settings have come online now. Okay, we don't need... It's crazy that they put... Okay, warn me. No, don't warn me. I don't need that. SVGA2 adapter. Okay. Well, I don't want to look too stupid. But, you know, I'm basically probably doing the same thing that you guys would be doing. Obviously, we need a higher resolution. So, type to search. Settings. There we are. Okay, so first off, we're going to need to find... Let's see, maybe under devices. Resolution. Jeez, that's bad. Okay, let's give this thing, let's see, we're running a 16 by 10 monitor, so let's do, ah, it's really big, um, 1680 by 1050, hit apply, keep changes, okay, good, so previously, because we were at such a low resolution, everything was really, really small, I mean, everything was really big, and we were having things running off the edge quite a lot. Now we have, oh, some backgrounds. All right, let's just pick that one. Let's see, we'll set that to be the background. And we'll set the link thing. Let me make that the lock screen. Okay, cool. That works good. Okay, cool. Now we have our dock. We can change the icon sizes. I'm a small icon person. I like small icons. Um, left, right, or bottom. Let's see. Bottom, you know, I don't know. I'm used to Windows, and that's where Windows puts it. So I kind of like having it there. I know. I should not be like that. So applications, you can go right here. We can go archive manager. Oh, we have a lot of different programs. So now we're going to go, let's see, settings, probably don't need that, don't need that. So now we can see that we're using 6 gigs of data, we don't need that, let's see if we can, in the information is out of date, reload, what, it's only like a minute old. Okay, so now... It wants me to authenticate the password. And this is how easy it is to install software on Ubuntu. It's, it's just about as easy as your Android phone. It works kind of the same way. Um, you have these app stores you can download from. Now, of course, the repository that you use, um, you can change it. There's a whole long list of different servers with different files on it. And you can actually add additional ones to it so you can have say five or six different repositories now what a lot of people don't know is you can actually um, add different app stores on your phone and kind of do the same thing on your phone too so i don't know how if we're gonna you know don't make the mistake i did and only give it 10 gigs of space um if you're gonna be doing the the, the box give it a little bit more and i think we're gonna need to we might have to close this and give it more space now I don't know if we've given this one under settings you also get to choose the network network address translation um, okay cool so I don't know without installing something that lets you view the other files on your network. I'm not sure it's going to be able to see all of my servers and my computers on my network and be able to say, for example, access data. But we can, okay. Okay. 
Okay, let me finish installing VLC. And we are going to be quickly approaching running out of space. Yeah, very much like the App Store. I mean, a little bit clunkier, but you can say, hey, you know, I want to download games. What games can we get? Let's see if this thing can actually use some data. Come on. So we are pretty much maxing out how much it can use um, CPU-wise. My CPU is going pretty crazy right here. We can run processes. Let's give... Um, I don't want to give VirtualBox too much more speed and power. We don't need to clean. Let's let's run that. Let's end the task on that today. I guess Steam decided that four o'clock in the morning is a good time to reload to um, do its updates. So that wasn't very good. So right here we have a lot of these different programs you can run. A lot of cool little games. I haven't really seen very many games on um, Linux that I would really really you know that are really really huge games you know there's tons of little itty bitty games you know anyway so what kind of what do we want we want to find we don't want to be in games at all So they do have something called Ubuntu One, which is like one account. You can sign in, like a user account, kind of like on your Android phone. Let's see, communication and news. I'm looking to install Chrome. We're already having some issues with Firefox crashing already. Um, never been a big fan of Firefox. So um, on here they have something called Chromium usually. I don't know if it's already installed by default on this operating system or not. Wireshark's a cool little program. I've played with that a lot. FileZilla, I have that on my Windows right here too. It's a nice little program. I use it for FTP a lot. Okay. Well, I'm not seeing Chrome anywhere. It has the render the right area. So web browsers. Let's just look at web browsers. So we have the Tor browser. Hey, Tor. I got that on my computer too. That's, um, if you know a VPN isn't enough to make you anonymous, Tor makes you even more anonymous. So it bounces it along. It's based on Firefox and boy is Tor slow <laughs> but if you need security I don't know I don't ever seem to never need that much security alright so we've installed all this stuff it's um, it basically says Firefox crashed it's not letting me open it let's see if it lets me open it this time let's see what YouTube looks like because we all love YouTube that's what you're watching me on Mm, boy, boy, that's slow. So our terms of service will be updated. Okay, whatever. So let's see how that works. Hey, we have sound. So anyway... All right, sounds excellent. Well, let's show you what it looks like when we restart the computer. So we will restart the Ubuntu machine now. And, gosh, it's so funny how it gives you that weird VGA screen. Okay, I have no idea what that failed to send host log message 
Why does it sit there so long? No idea. Well, looks like we're going to be back right in here into Ubuntu. So now you can run it on your computer. There are options. Um, I could select the resolution of my actual monitor and I could run this full screen on this monitor. Um, of course, I used to have additional monitors and you could run, say for example, I could run the Ubuntu in a completely separate monitor and run it there. Um, I could also run this as like a server and actually remote into it, even from a different computer from this. Uh, these are all various options you can set up. There are so many cool things you can do. Um, but anyway, now we got Ubuntu running on Windows 10. So, Windows 10. So, of course, this computer has 16 gigs of RAM, uh, and we're using four of it to run this. Um, you know, maybe I'll upgrade my RAM this week. If I'm going to be running a lot of virtual boxes, I mean, heck, I got two empty slots over there. So let's put some more RAM in it. All right, cool. Well, there we are. That concludes the video. Um, I like to do these really long like um, videos. If you enjoyed this, like and subscribe. Um, and hopefully you learned something. If you did, write a comment. Um, of course, if you, you know, you can like us here on Facebook. I mean, on um, on YouTube. You can also see us on Facebook. Emerald Computers is our page on Facebook. So facebook.com slash Emerald Computers. Um, also, if you Google us, Emerald Computers on, um, on Google, and if this video is helpful for you, you know, give us give us a five star review on Google. That would really help out our business, and we'd be really thankful to that. So like, subscribe, you know, follow us on Facebook, follow us on Google, all that fun stuff, and have an awesome day.